What is up, brothers and sisters? Welcome to the Mitch Grace Show. Another episode ready to rock for you. And this is different today. And if you only knew what happened behind the scenes on this episode, that just tells us how good it's going to be. And we're going to tell you right now, we're going to come back later and do a part two of this because I just know the conversation is going to be amazing. So I promised you at the beginning of the year that 2020 was all about guests. It has been amazing to meet so many people, most of them via social media, the miracle of social media. And today I have with me another who I'm just going to say I've known him for about 30 minutes and what we've already been through. He's a really special guy. So David Lowe, welcome to the Mitch Gray Show. Mitch, thank you very much for having me on. That was quite an ordeal. I feel like we bonded and we're going to be best buddies after this. Uh, I, I'll already, tell you what, yeah, the only thing already. that could have been different was we would have had a bonfire, like where we could have like, you know, roasted marshmallows and stuff. <laughs> every, every possible kind of tech glitch occurred, but we, we, we got there. Yes. Yes, we did. We prevailed. We were, we were a great team. And so here we go. We're going to give the people what they really want. Um, David, I have to tell you to start off, man. I looked at your website after we first connected, and the first thing your website says is my favorite thing that you've ever done. And it just says entrepreneur, author, maverick. That is, do you remember that your website says that? Yes. <laughs> and it's epic. So let's dig into that right away, man. That is awesome. You make it an Englishman blush. <laughs> <laughs> that's not an easy task either not an easy task. no no yeah there's uh there's a lot of websites that give you give you sort of the usual like seo expert or it's pretty much the the linkedin job description just cut and pasted as the slogan for the website and i thought if i put entrepreneur or for the you know people like yeah yeah we've seen that before and then it's just hit him with hit him with the maverick and just yeah lightning bolt sort of keep him yes. keep him on the site so and, and that's, exactly what that, that's exactly what I felt. The picture's great. The colors are great. But when I saw author, Maverick, entrepreneur, I'm like, okay, this is it. This guy's, this guy's it. So nice job, man. Nice job. Thank you. You're welcome. And thanks for, thanks for checking out the website. Yeah, and, no problem. Uh, yeah. I, I'd like to know a little bit about my guest. I mean, I don't, you know, totally fanboy over everyone, but I like to know a little bit. So, uh, man, you're an author. Um, you've got a book that has a lot of, uh, of momentum right now, a book called Blow It Up. Uh, you have a podcast of the same name. Um, so yeah, you've got a lot going on. Tell, tell us a little bit more about you other than your awesome website and your awesome book. Um, tell, tell the listeners a little bit about David and, and kind of what you have going on in life right now. Busy, busy, busy bee. So yeah, um, I'm co I co-founded a, a PPE startup called Guardian Medical with uh, with a few cool entrepreneurs here in San Diego. Uh, PPE stands for Personal Protective Equipment. In case uh, you're scratching your head, saying what the what on earth are you talking about with these crazy acronyms? Right. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're kind of really solving the the crisis that has occurred in the U.S. and making sure that healthcare workers have uh, you know medical grade masks, uh, but we also can provide non-medical grade masks as well to um, to business owners, airports, for example, which we did recently, and uh, yeah, and beyond that, we're doing we're providing things like sanitizer, gowns, uh, everything you can think of, booties, you know, all sorts. So yeah, guardianmedical.com is is the site that I helped to launch, um, and then apart from that, yeah, you mentioned the book, the podcast. Um, I'm really developing a few ideas around that, trying to get guests on. Um, that reminds me, you should probably come on as a as an entrepreneurial podcaster. You'd be, you make a, a great guest, I'm sure, being such a great podcast host. And yes, so we'll get. I have to get you on there. And what else is going on? I mean, just kind of trying to trying to work on my mindset. I got a coach a little while ago, so yeah, learned a lot about kind of developing my my mind as a muscle, if you like, and strengthening that. So uh, doing things like incantations every morning to to kind of stay positive and set yourself up for the day listening to cool music um i was on a podcast the other day with with a guy called dustin miller a uh, poly innovator mm -hmm. and i uh, hope i can hope i can name, name yes, <laughs> drop please. in uh, the podcast if not cut that uh, no, but super it. cool guy and uh, and he was he was mentioning this genre of music i hadn't come across which is called epic music so you know i'd heard a lot of uh, soundtrack music and kind of always listen to the superman theme so he had pumped me up um for my entrepreneurial entrepreneurial pursuits and 
but yeah, check it, check out Epic music and that'll just, that'll get you in the zone. And then I came across, uh, this is kind of just to get yourself going in the morning, came across a guy called Wim Hof, who I believe is Dutch and he's, his nickname is the Iceman. I think he did this kind of underwater dive in, in the, you know, freezing cold waters, like literally under the ice mm-hmm. for world record distance. And so taking his advice there and taking cold showers in the morning to, to kind of just get your body, almost to shock your body into uh, a res- into responding and kind of getting you, you know, into into overdrive almost. Um, it also wards off depression, which I suffered from in England, and I've I've really noticed the results since doing this. And, and you know, you start out jumping into a cold shower, and you're like, "What am I doing? <laughs> this Dutch guy, what is he saying? He's a nut job." And you know, your tolerance gradually increases, and and it starts. You know, you start with like five seconds, and then switch it to warm, and gradually you're going up to like 30 seconds and then three minutes and five minutes. And, and I've got to the point now where I'm literally going straight in as if I'm jumping into the ocean almost and oh, just, wow. yeah, doing the whole thing cold. And that's, that's really helping me to stay positive, keep, keep the depression away and, and just stay focused. Yeah. Right. Right. So, um, a lot there. Let's back up a little bit. Uh, where are you from? People are going to want to know. <laughs> I'm from the northwest of England. I was born in a place called Blackpool, which is on the coast. Um, we've we've got a, uh, a we've got Blackpool Tower, which is um, a little bit like the Eiffel Tower. We call it the poor man's Paris. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. But that's and where I'm from. And you're uh, what, what brought you over to the states? 2012. I wanted to. I, I lit- Literally wanted to become an entrepreneur. I thought this was the best country in the world to to realize that. And I, I moved from London. I've been in London for ten years, and I moved across to Austin, Texas. Yes. And I launched a business called Uberpong. Um, sold custom ping pong paddles, which later went to, went into custom table, custom ping pong tables, custom balls. And then almost kind of randomly went into the celebrity ping pong tournament space, and we did a ping pong tournament with the LA Dodgers for a couple of years, um, wow. which was amazing. Jimmy Kimmel hosted and yeah, it was quite a, yeah, I was within two years of, of leaving rainy England. So I was like this, yeah, enjoying this. <laughs> you fell in love quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like, I think I'll stay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Right. So, um, wow, that's pretty incredible. I didn't, I didn't know that about you. So why ping pong paddles? That's a very interesting, you're like, I'm going to the U S to be an entrepreneur, ping pong paddles. How? I was working in a tech startup in London and I saw a couple of guys play playing on the table. I thought very different personalities, but they're, but they're playing red and black paddles. So there's, it's one of the few sports that had not been personalized. You know, you can't customize the gear. Yes. And so I thought that was like light bulb moment. <coughs> Excuse me, and 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 that was it. It was just like this is a great opportunity to be able to to change the face of the sport. And I just thought, yeah, the American audience would really would really kind of receive that well, and and it, it worked out. Yeah, it reminds me of the uh, uh, what's the game called cornhole, where you take the yeah. bag, and you know those cornhole boards, man. Those and people pay three, four, five, six hundred dollars or more for those. So it kind of reminds me of that whole idea. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, that was one I was, yeah, that's a good, good reminder because I saw a few of those in, in Austin. And then you've got, is it shuffleboard with the sand? Yes. yes. That's it, yeah. Um, those custom tables, if you, if, you, if you, I guess, I was going to say, find the, find the right guy, find the wrong guy, depending on your budget, uh, <laughs> they can be like into the thousands. Yeah. Just crazy numbers. That's well, well, good on you, man. Nice job. Nice job. Ping pong paddles will, will get your open door to entrepreneurship in America. If you're David Lowe, that's how it works. So yeah, really nice work. Um, Thank you. I want to go back to the PPE and, and I find that very interesting because my observation during this uh, season in the world, but America especially, is you see and hear a lot of people expressing opinion. You see and hear very few people taking action. And so what was your motivating factor um, kind of maneuvering yourself from being a guy that was just on the sidelines or maybe in the stands yelling 
to saying, no, 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 we're going to take some action. What, what led you to, to make that decision? Well, here's, here's the true story. So I was trying to get a co-living startup going called Quirky. And I kind of pushed things really far in Tijuana, which is just over the border here from San Diego. Mm-hmm. And we were going to try this micro co-living, almost like micro hotel kind of concept. And we, I, got, I got kind of advisors and partners, architect, like the 3D renderings, funding lined up, everything ready to go. And of course, coronavirus hits. Mm-hmm. And so I, you know, at, at first it's like, you know, <laughs> literally head in my hand is just like, what is this? Is this going to clear up in a week, a month? And of course you realize it, it's, it's devastating and it's right. put, I think 30 million Americans out of work and it's, it's horrendous. And so, yeah, it was very much kind of like, what, I, how can I make the worst thing that's happened the best thing? And I was speaking to a few connections, a few uh, fellow entrepreneurs, and the, um, yes, a friend of mine, he's, he's got a lighting company, and he had kind of pivoted to be able to um, use the supply chain, if you like, uh, with his, his um, factories over in China, um, and had seen how devastating it had been with his wife, who was, was, um, was in the kind of healthcare system and had already kind of been testing out that space. And I'd kind of gone to them and said how obviously devastating this was. There's a lot of, you know, we've seen the shortage, but no one's really doing anything about it. There's a lot of kind of um, wannabes kind of coming into the space uh, with either bad product that they're shipping. They know it's bad, but they just want to cash in quickly and then, you know, do a runner. Or they are saying to customers, "We, we can, we've got this stock and we can, fulfill this you know quickly and then of course it gets to like three months six you know that it becomes like it's basically stuck in china it's not in the u.s whereas you know we're in the u.s we've got our inventory in the u.s and so we just we kind of talked and and teamed up and co-founded guardian medical and and figured that yeah we 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 have like i said we've got the stock on the ground in the u.s we can help people now we can ship it now and um and not only handling the medical side of it and helping the healthcare workers, which is obviously crucial, but also the non-medical mm-hmm. um, or non-healthcare workers. And, you know, for example, business owners opening restaurants, they've got to protect themselves. They've got to protect their employees. They've got to protect the people coming in. And so just making sure that it's optimized for that reopening, if you like. Right. What's been the greatest challenge? So you, you literally in a, a minute uh, frame of time. Yeah. I mean, just to, with the word pivot has been like a, a major word. Um, and, and it's a great word, but I mean, man, you literally went from one idea that was pretty massive to saying, okay, that's not going to work right now. And then shifting your whole mindset into something else in a very short amount of time. So what was the greatest challenge to making that shift and then to launching? mindset again going back to what i was saying before about developing mindset so because i'd had that coach and i'd worked very hard on developing just a just a very kind of resilient and almost bulletproof mindset right um that enabled me to go from that kind of not failure because it's on hold and there's a very good chance you know that can still launch but it's not going to launch anytime soon and so, so just literally being able to convince myself that the the pivot there was a pivot there and to to just yeah to be to be entrepreneurial and not get stuck and say you know like be be, be fixated on on that having to work it's like how again how can you make the the worst thing the best thing and so yeah i mean you think you look at a lot of entrepreneurs they they some people try to launch businesses and they don't work out they've they've you know they've experimented it's it's not happened and they've had to to quit that and either go back to you know getting a day job or or starting a different entrepreneurial venture right and so i think it's yeah it, it's i i hope people see this and they're kind of like okay they <laughs> dave's living proof that you can do that you can make that pivot and succeed because we're really doing well with um, with guardian medical like it's we're, we're flying and it's we're obviously helping a lot of people but it's a very successful business very quickly and we're also building in like contingency plans so we can, we can scale this up and we can bring in new products and we can look at, you know, further ways that we can help people and then make this a very human brand versus just doing what a lot of people do, which is kind of like buy our, buy our masks, 
and just right. the flogging, the, you know, hard selling these things. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's um, pivoting and, and iterating and that's, that's being, a, that's being, that's being an entrepreneur. Right. Right. Yeah. That was my next question is what's next because what, what, what we see happening in times of tragedy and I can think back to when nine 11 happened, you know, uh, almost two decades ago, you saw a lot of people run to the scene. Um, <coughs> I have the saying that magic is found in the recovery. So you have to get through the challenging part to get to the recovery phase. And you saw a lot of people flood to the scene, but then when the recovery work started to come into play, which, which in my estimation is actually the hardest part of the work, um, people left. And so that was my next question is what's next? Are you going to take this further? What, what's the larger vision for um, this kind of random startup that you have empowered? Well, we've obviously had success with, with um, on, on the medical front, let's say. We're now seeing the, the success coming with, with, let's say, small business owners. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let's say we're going from a small percentage of the population that we're affecting to suddenly seeing that we can help 330 million, 330 million Americans because, yeah, there's a lot of states opening up and there's a lot of people saying that they're doing that prematurely. And so we're seeing that, you know, is it a bad thing? Is it a good thing? We're just seeing the opportunity. So if people want to go back to work, how can we protect them? And so that's really short term. So, you know, looking ahead to let's, let's say when, I mean, it's just started very recently. Was, um, I'm a big soccer fan. So the German Bundesliga just reopened. Yes. Um, the English Premier League will be, kind of restarting in about a month. So, but sports, right? So NBA, MLB, and so on, all the leagues, NFL. So looking at it, looking ahead to how we can protect those, mm -hmm. those arenas, if you like, and, and, and when the fans start going back to, to watch these games, how, if, you know, coronavirus is not going to disappear. That's, that's what a lot of experts are saying. It's a bit right. like the, the common flu. Like it will be, it will be here um, ongoing. And so, yeah, you know, how can we, how can we protect, how can we allow people to go back to normal and, and but at the same time protecting them as quickly right. as possible? And that's, that's really like the big goal. So this, you know, we had a, like a client came through recently and he was saying about um, plastic, almost like plastic screens. Yes, yes, yes. Which we hadn't really thought about initially. And they said, yeah, we want to do events, but we have to have these plastic screens to be, to be the borders between people. Right. And you're thinking, wow, that's, that seems quite extreme. But at the same time, yeah, I mean, if, if people go to the event and they don't have a mask and people aren't providing the mask, then maybe those screen, maybe that's something that we can provide. So there's lots of different solutions um, with Guardian Medical, yeah. So I feel, I, I feel like there's a, yeah, there's a way that we can kind of turn this into a kind of bigger thing versus just doing, again, what, what a lot of people do is just jumping into this hard-selling product until they sell out or... Right. Don't sell enough and go out of business. Yeah, there's, there's, there's like a, there's a future vision. Yeah, it's really interesting. It, it, it the, the going back to the old way is not going to take place. This, this is a new world. It's a new situation. It's a new approach. And one thing I've told business owners from the beginning of this is if you're a traditionalist, you're going to get left behind because there's a new expectation from consumers there's a new expectation from uh, business owners, from workers, from everything. And so, I, you know, really you're talking about tangible products, but really what I'm hearing in between the lines is you're innovating the future. And yes. that's where I would encourage all entrepreneurs and business leaders to be is start innovating the future now because it's not going to go back to the way it was. It's a really good point. And look at, look at retail. As, as a kind of case study. So obviously for years and years and years, it was all about going to the, the store to pick up your, you know, groceries or um, hardware, whatever. And then everybody, then there was the migration online. So it was all about e-commerce and websites and so on. And then the people, the traditionalists who stayed in the brick and mortar store, you know, they, they, a lot of them died. Right. Um, what's happened, what's happened now is it's almost kind of full circle. So, mm -hmm. People are realizing that they've sacrificed, you know, they've, they've, they ha they've started online, they don't have the offline. So, but they're looking at retail, not in the traditional sense, but in an experiential sense. Yes. And so 
that it's, you know, I think with Amazon, they were doing, um, it was the, oh, I'm trying to think of the, it was kind of like this, this basically the store that had no humans in, in the store. It's like oh, self checkouts right. and order like a full, like a, um, almost like, like a, a fully, smart, auto, fully smart, automated store, like a smart store. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Fully automated. Right. And so there's, there's, there's different kind of executions of, of retail now. And I think that's, that's exciting. And so I wrote, I wrote an article on, on the low playbook, uh, com very recently about, cause everyone's writing about kind of the work, like all the terrible things that are happening, right. About coronavirus. So I wrote an article and it was set. I think it was the title was I remember the title now 12, 12 reasons why coronavirus is the best thing. That, that could happen to us and so it's looking at how stores are going to be are going to embrace um wellness mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. and um they're going to be much cleaner experiences like everywhere we go will be cleaner right um i was also discussing this on on 20 of the day um the handshake is a is a very big thing in, in, in tradition um in the u.s right. so I used to live in Japan. I lived in Japan for six months. I was an English teacher a few years back. And, and I loved the bow, the simple mm. Japanese bow, non-contact, but it's kind of like an art form. And it's, they, they say the, the, something like the perfect bow is, is, um, is mimicking a, a blade of grass blowing in the wind. Something like that. Mm. It's, it's like an, it becomes an art form versus just handshake. Right. And so again, with coronavirus, yeah, people, people are going to stop shaking hands. Yeah. So how do we, how do we still, how do we replace the handshake? Certainly short, short term without wearing gloves. <laughs> right. right. Um, I, I'm actually a fan of replacing the handshake. I don't know if you know the history of the handshake, but it was originated uh, basically as a way to check and see if people had weapons. And is that so, right? Yeah. So back, you this know, is what I love about coming on podcasts because I learn, I learn from the hosts. Right. This, this is, it's, an edu it's educational. It's a very Western philosophy. You know, it's a very a couple of hundred years ago, the wild, wild West. And the reason they shook hands is so they knew I've at least got one hand in my hand and I can see if you have weapons or not. And so it's a very defensive, it's not cordial at all. And I've always thought it was a very strange um, way to greet people. So I like the bow idea. That's, that's a really cool um, I, a couple of people that I know have gone to the whole elbow, like tap elbow thing, which is kind of awkward as well, but it's kind of funny. I think people are having fun with it, which is, which is a good thing. There's, um, there's a few variations. You've got the power five and yeah. the, <laughs> right. yeah, the, the chi I, I call it the chicken wing, but chicken yeah, the, el the elbow, the, uh, the air five. The air yes, high five. yes. As long as, we don't, go, as, long as we don't go to the, as long as we don't go to the head, butt, we'll, we'll, we'll be okay. <laughs> We'll okay. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> I, I'm definitely not adopting that one. Right. Um, before we move on from Guardian Medical, tell people where they can um, find out more about, because I know we have a lot of listeners that um, uh, are, are business leaders, even work in the restaurant field. Um, a lot of listeners that are even in the medical field. So give people kind of some information of where they can reach out to uh, Guardian Medical. Sure. And yeah, thanks for letting me give a quick shout out. Uh, website is guardianmedical.com. So G U A R D I A guardianmedical.com. We're on Twitter. In fact, we're on yeah Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at guardian medical. So just yeah, easy to remember. And then I'm trying to think about the channels we're on, we'll be on YouTube very soon. Uh, we just launched an affiliate network as well. So, um, yeah, if you're interested in being a part of that, um, check out the website. And there's a link on there and then there'll be loads more content just for, for people using the website and affiliates um, on YouTube soon. Perfect. And we'll put that in the show notes as well. Cause I'd love for people to have that as a, as a resource. So, um, awesome. So let's go from there to the book, uh, blow it up. So great title. Um, Thanks. what in the world does that mean? If someone just sees it and go, yeah, interesting read. Um, yeah. What, what, what's up with blow it up? I like that you asked me that because no one's asked me that. Um, <laughs> I like, promised why, you. Why the title? I promised you I would ask you questions that no one else has asked. So, so there's one. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I appreciate it. Uh, blow it up is so. The the thought is that obviously you can think of blow it up like explosion and so on. But I for me blow it up is like in, you're inflating it like a, like you're inflating a balloon, right? You're blowing that up, but it's it's just it's exploding it into life. So it's the, it's the big bang theory. It's the whole, just, yeah, bringing, bringing ideas to life. And so hence blow it up. Um, the book is about my, really my entrepreneurial 
kind of start in the US, so coming across to Austin, Texas in 2012, launching a crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter, raising $10,000 in 30 days there so I could launch the business and how I bootstrapped it to success, grew it to a global brand in about two years, got on Extra TV, partnered with the LA Dodgers. Like the whole story of some Englishman coming to the, to, right. to the US with the, with the desire to, right. you know, to get a piece of the American dream and yeah, and really just growing a global brand and then, and then ultimately selling it uh, after five years. Um, and just, yeah, just that whole story, the whole life cycle of a startup and it will teach you how to come up with, you know, the idea, all the different, fa- all the different phases in the, in a startup cycle. So mm-hmm. the idea phase, um, launch, partnerships, um, how to get into the media, um, how to get your first employees on board. I'm trying to think what else is in there. Just, yeah, everything. Marketing, branding, um, how, to, how to come up with the right product, how to research the right, you know, the, to show there's a, there's a market need and so on. And then how to diversify as well. So how to go into different products and, and ultimately to grow it big. Is the book available via uh, paperback, hardback, or just is it just an ebook? Paperback, um, you can get it as an ebook as well. Okay. The audio book is coming soon, um, nice. as soon as I get a, a little bit of time. I'll be doing the audio book, and um, yeah, so paperback or ebook at the moment. Okay, and then I'll, and then I'm doing the the Blow It Up podcast is on Anchor, and, and I'm kind of just spinning off the book a little bit there, just to, to almost test out the the audio book um, just to practice a little bit in a few chapters on there as a teaser. Perfect. And where can people get the book? Sounds, I, I, I really want to read it by the way. I, when I first uh, found you on Twitter and, w- and we were talking about a podcast, I didn't actually realize that you had a book. And so when I went on your website and saw it, I'm like, Oh yeah, sounds like a great read. So uh, where can a guy like me find the book? Literally, if you go to amazon.com and search for blow it up, David Lowe, it'll, it'll come up, you can get it on there. Perfect. So that's, um, at the moment, that's the, the only channel I'm using. Um, that said, you can, you can go, if you go to my website, dloplaybook.com, there's a way to buy it through there as well. Okay, cool. dloplaybook.com, L-O-W-E, yeah. so awesome. Yeah. Um, I can think of a few people off the top of my head that I know listen to the show that are probably going to uh, be very curious about, about that book, so very good. Um, I want to Thanks. backtrack when you, when you first started telling us about yourself, there were some other little diamonds in the rough that you mentioned that I just know people are going to wonder. Um, you, you, you said you kind of looked at America as the place to, to, to be as an entrepreneur. Um, so many people, well, let's just be honest. Uh, America is truly founded on, Uh, immigrants and on people that have said, I want an opportunity. Um, So we know that that so many people still have that opportunity, create that opportunity. Uh, This country's built on that opportunity, but (coughs) I want to go a little deeper than just the opportunity. What is one uh, expectation that you had of America that was Totally, it was like mystified. Like you had this expectation and you got here and you were like, oh, that is not at all what I thought it would be. I got the answer immediately. Customer service. Okay. Came across to US in uh, to, uh, Orlando, Florida for the first time when I was 13 years old and just, it just blew me away. So you've got obviously Disneyland and all that, Mickey Mouse and it's all the, you know, Universal Studios and going on Back to Future, Back to the Future, right? So all the theme parks, you know, that was like my yes. first kind of exposure to the to the American culture. And I thought just immediately, I got to live here. Like, I got to live here one day. This is amazing. I can just go to, yeah, like like that's how America is. It's like a, one giant theme park. Right. Um, how wrong was I? <laughs> um, <laughs> but here's the thing. What, at 13 years old, so this was about 1994. Five, I think it was. Okay. And I'm going into all these places, my parents' hotels and restaurants and everything. And everyone, the first thing you, you know, you sense is this, and it's just the warmth, the warmth of people. And they're just yes. like, hey, welcome in. And 
can I get, you know, it's like the water arrives as soon as you sit down and it's got ice in it <laughs> right. and it's just the simple things. And then it's like, can I get you anything else? And they're, they're really they're just taking care of you. And it gets to the end and the, you know, you pay the bill, pay the check. And, um, and they're like, have a nice day. I, like, sorry, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> have a nice day. I mean, that was just, yeah, just to right. blew me away. Right. And I thought these people are so nice and friendly. And then, of course, you learn about the tipping culture and everything. You're like, that's why they're being so nice. Yes, uh-huh. yes, yes. But it was, so, it was so refreshing because if you're in England and you go to an English pub and you, you order a drink, you know, the, the pint comes down or something gets smacked on the, on the <laughs> bar top, it spills over the sides. And even if you tip them, they never say thank you. So it's just it's a totally different culture. Yeah. And so fast forward to when I moved to Austin, Texas in 2012, everything had changed. Right. <laughs> everything had changed. It had all gone south. Even with, even with the, what is it, the Southern hospitality and Texas charm, yes. it all changed. Yeah. And that was like a, a really big, a huge contrasting thing that I've noticed kind of factor. And I just, you know, it, that this is, customer service is not my calling, right. but I kind of wanted to start a sort of, I don't know what it would be like, customer service training, <laughs> consultancy, and I thought it actually it probably quite worked because I could go in and say, you know, I'm an Englishman and I'm, it's all, I could sort of play it as I'm all about the manners and the, the etiquette and let's, it would be, I think I'd be able to make it work. But at the same time, yeah, I just thought that's, that's, that's someone else. Someone else can do that. That's, that's their calling. Right. But it's definitely, customer service needs to improve big time. Yes. And I moved to San Diego. It's horrendous here. There is no, there's like no customer service. You call people up on the phone and it's just, yeah, it's, it's, you're a burden. Yeah. So any company, this, I keep saying this to any companies, large or small, but let's say you start a company, starting a, you know, you launch your startup, get your customer service right yeah. first. That's the very, very first thing. Build, bake that into the DNA of your, of your brand and company. Get that right. Because if you get it right, it's the easiest way to win customers and clients. I, first of all, great story. Um, I, I love what you just said because I, I think what leaders miss is customer service is a direct streamline from top leadership. Uh, yes. hu- humans by nature will, will raise to the level of expectation and they'll also to respond to a standard that is set. And so, you know, if someone has bad customer service, I immediately know that either A, they're not trained well, or B, they're not treated well. But I would mm-hmm. say in most situations, it's both A and B. And so when leadership can realize customer service is a reflection in the mirror, and take responsibility for that, it changes the game. And I, I've been fortunate to work with and for a few companies that customer service was it. Um, and, and that was kind of where they made their, made their living and, and created, made it into, you know, built it into their DNA and it changes everything. And so, yeah, you're exactly right. And I apologize that your great experience was Disneyland or Disney World. <laughs> And you, and you were let down. And what's even crazier is Austin, Texas is actually overall a pretty friendly city. But I can see where you were let down drastically in that situation. So um, what was the biggest surprise coming from England to America? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'd say the, the, the biggest shock was the, the weather change. So not, not, we're talking London, London to Austin, Texas, yeah. That, that was sort of, let's say, I'm trying to do the calculation because we, I'm always thinking of England and C, right. and over here is F. But um, let's say yeah, for a, lot, a large part of the year, yeah, you're sub 32. So, yeah. And then, of course, so you used to, you used, we, in the UK, it's zero. So you, the, the sort of mark of coal is zero C. But in Austin, the mark is 100, so it's, better, it's almost better to use Fahrenheit there because right. we, we were always over, over the 100 mark and then massively humid. So that just the weather is, was the most obvious one. The bugs, you know, in England, we don't really have bugs. Yeah. And you open a cupboard or something in Texas and, the, you know, a cockroach the size of your face. 
<laughs> comes flying out at you yes. and you yes. you do sort of the tom and jerry you know is it the mom that jump, okay. she jumps up on the on the stool and cries right, for, for right. thomas yeah right um so it's it, yeah i was doing that a lot yeah um what else i mean and i guess just the again london very very fast paced so very similar to new york so the hustle big big time hustle over there Austin, even though there's a good startup scene in Austin, is very laid back, very, very, very laid back. And so just the pace, yeah, the pace change, I would say. Apart from that, you know, it's the food's pretty fairly similar, apart from barbecue, which is amazing. Um, language, obviously, is the same. So, yeah, I was very fortunate in a sense that I could kind of adjust fairly quickly to, to you know, life over there. Right. Um, San Diego is just a, a big switch here is just – we're on the coast, the surf culture, very laid, very laid back in a just a different way. Um, but having, you know, LA so close, you've obviously got the influence of, of Holly, um, yeah, Hollywood and act, the acting, let's say, scene and yeah, act, uh, film industry. And then, in, you know, a little bit further up, you've got Silicon Valley and, and San Francisco. So startup, the uh, startup Mecca. So yeah, right. adjusting to California. Uh, what's super cool about San Diego, and, and people ask me this, like, what's your, what's your favorite part about, about California and San Diego? At, well, about San Diego, actually. Um, and I'll say Tijuana. Tijuana is like 14 miles south, and it's kind of forgotten. I have met so many San Diegans who just have never been in that, and they're like, you know, mid-30s, mid-40s, and I'm like, never been at Mexico. It's oh, right wow. there. Yeah. You walk across, you just get the train down to the border, or you drive to the border, super quick, 20 minutes takes you about five minutes to walk across and then you'll be eating the best tacos in the world. No exaggeration wow. in Tijuana. My Spanish has improved. So I'm kind of fairly bilingual now, which is, I wanted to be fluent in Spanish. And so that's like a big goal and that's a great excuse to practice over there. Right. Uh, quirky, as I said, was, you know, we were really close to launching over the board in Tijuana as a really good test market because we could have launched that for about a quarter of the cost of launching it in California. Mm. And so, yeah, you know, that's, I see that as like a really good test bed for, for, for um, certainly San Diego, maybe even California entrepreneurs. Right. And so, yeah, that's like, yeah, but I'm in San Diego now. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, what's next? What's next for you? I know you've mentioned the, the startup that you had to pause and you're going to come back to it, but what's next for you personally and what's next for you uh, professionally? So, so being a co-founder with Guy Medical and CMO, so it's kind of like a new, I'm normally CEO, but I'm, I'm taking on the marketing or, or you know, uh, handling the, the marketing reins, if you like. And so that's, that's like, I'm loving it because I'm getting to learn just about kind of growth hacking and, you know, for example, like using, you know, getting on podcasts and what, what channels are working to gain exposure and so on. But <laughs> excuse me but also at the same time you know how how can i how can i kind of add value to shows and and bring up the let's say the podcast and and the personal brands of pod, podcast hosts and so on so really just that like getting getting stuck into the more into the startup community podcast community like helping helping people um while at the same time obviously getting getting exposure for what i'm working on so that's been that's been the big kind of push recently um, in addition to that, it's yeah, obviously promoting Blow It Up, promoting the book, promoting the podcast. I'm also going to be looking very soon at uh, interview, interviewing entrepreneurs for the Blow It Up podcast. So just a quick shout out to any of the any of the guests listening. If you want to be on that for an entrepreneur, um, if, if you're thinking of becoming an entrepreneur, really just anything in that kind of space, um, hit me up on on uh, on Twitter at David J Low or, or DLowPlaybook.com and what else uh, beyond that? I mean, it's I'm blogging a lot on the on the Love Playbook, and then possible little business uh, side business, should I say, uh, in the music space. And I know you're a you're, you mm -hmm. love music and uh, are in that world. So I've I've got yeah a little side hustle that that I'm working on and, and just trying to develop something um, in an certainly online form initially, but maybe turn that into an app just to um, to kind of solve the the issue at the moment, which is that a lot of musicians can't play live. Right. And so how can we connect them with fans in a kind of, in a, in a new way? Yeah. I love it, man. 
I love it. This, this, uh, I knew this conversation was going to be good. It took a few turns that were unexpected and I absolutely love the unexpected. That's, that's where real life is found in my opinion. So, um, Dave, here's what I want to do, man. I know because we got started late, we're going to cut this a little shorter than we normally like to because we both have other things to move on to and that's okay. I, I would like to propose this. I want to have you on again because you mentioned a few things that we didn't get, get to and it's, it's something that you and I have um, as a connection point, and that is mental health. Um, I also struggle with depression, and I, I think, you know, I had a friend, and I said this on a show earlier, um, I had a friend that one time told me, he said, the problem with mental health is you can't see it. And so people don't respond to, you know, if someone has a disease or cancer or something, unfortunately, people respond to it. The problem with mental health is it becomes isolated because no one responds to it. And it's as, as, as uh, more adaptive as we've become to it, it's still very taboo for a lot of people. And what I would like to do is have you on in the near future. And I would like to talk about the connection and the battle and the challenge of mental health and being an entrepreneur, because I know for all of us that are, that are people in general that deal with mental health, but especially entrepreneurs, that can provide a huge hurdle that um, when we don't have the support around us that we need can be really um, an interesting battle. So um, I would love to have that conversation at some point. Well, I love that you, you brought that up and that's something that we could talk about and kind of just get out in the, in the open if you like, because uh, I'm from England, so we, we, we're not very emotional people. Yeah. And when this, maybe a few years ago, when people, when it took really celebrities to kind of say, I've gone through depression to make it real because let's say, you know, just regular, regular people, if you like, they, when they said it, people didn't take it seriously. And it took like, yeah, it just took someone profile to say it for people that take it seriously. And that's a shame. That's a big shame. Right. And like you said, it's invisible. It's, it's the invisible killer. And so, yeah, it's, we've, we've got to talk about it and we've got to work out, um, what we, what works to, to kind of keep it at bay, because that's the, the, the other thing is that it's, you're, you're kind of finding it daily. That's so you can, you can feel great, yes. right? You can feel the best, you're having the best day, but tomorrow could be, you could revert and you could be in, let's say in, in, in a darker place. And so that's, that's the, yeah, we we got to talk about that, man. Yeah, and it's and it's interesting to kind of to kind of bring bring that full circle. It's um, we still have to keep living life. You know, it's 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 one day I can be ha I can wake up and <coughs> what I call the darkness has kind of hit me that day. But I've still got to do an interview podcast. I've still got to you know get other projects done. I still have to meet with clients. Those things don't stop. And I think where we've done people that deal with mental health at a service is helping empower them and equip them. I kind of call it as we have our toolboxes and we need to know what tool works for that day. Uh -huh. um, and we're constantly fighting the ghost. We're constantly fighting the ghost. And so I would just, we could obviously go on with that. And I don't want to today because I want us to give it full justice. And I would love to just have some time to have that conversation. So love it i'm i'm yeah i'd love, I'd love to talk about that on a separate awesome. podcast episode thank and thanks for thinking of bringing me back for it yes i'd love to love to okay um we're gonna start wrapping it up man i have five questions that i ask all of my guests you have to use one word answers so no, no no cheating no rebellion in this moment one word answers they're simple i promise uh so here we go kind of like a speed round thing um regarding books do you prefer digital or paper regarding books digital digital okay nice uh coffee just or tea? recent recently though i'm recently. extending the answer now from one oh. word <laughs> but it's <laughs> so, so you just, recently just converted. recently because i because, tell you why because it can i can i, yes, can I elaborate yes, yes. good um <laughs> <laughs> when one word became <laughs> 1001, <laughs> um, the last risk after one, right. um, it's minimalism. Ah. So I'm, I'm really loving the minimalist kind of existence and just downsizing and minimalism. And that, again, that's about, that comes back to mental health. Yes. yes. So if things are kind of tidy and it's, you're minimalist and there's less stuff around you and yeah. that you're worrying about, 
you, your brain is clear, you, your mind is, is more aware, more focused. So um, digital over physical. I'm glad you expounded on that. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give away to you um, the read because I want to circle back. I'll make a note for our future episode um, about decluttering um, because I think that's valuable. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, okay, number two, coffee or tea? Don't know if you can see this. Okay, I'll spill it all over. I'm going to spill it. It's a, this is a coffee, coffee. not a tea because everyone says Englishman tea, <laughs> assuming, I suppose, rightly so, um, with our history traditions but coffee here's the thing coffee throughout the week tea at the weekend but but also coffee to kind of pump me up tea when i'm sick ginger and sort of ginger and lemon tea that's yes, yes that's the kind of I'm so in line. I'm coffee. in line with that. I'm in line with that for sure. And uh, I'm in the US I got got be coffee. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, what's one guilty pleasure that you have? One word. One word. Oof. And I'd, be, I'd let you elaborate on two, so you don't get to <laughs> you don't get to elaborate anymore. One guilty pleasure. Yes, in one word. Soccer's a bit boring, isn't it? If I just say soccer, football. No, no. Okay. Could, could you please call it football, though? Let's let's do this right. Yeah. Because you kick, kick right. the ball with your foot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't understand. I'm never I'm never going to win though. And I've tried it. Trust me. When I first moved here in 20, like, <laughs> first few years, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. football, right? Foot. Ball, football, right. soccer, wow. American football, American handball, not American football. American yeah, it's so still catch, catch. Just call it catch. Yeah, catch. <laughs> yeah. I'm professional huge, catch. I'm a huge football fan of both sports, um, American and uh, real football. My son plays college football uh, in in America, so I'm a huge. Which is fan. bigger than NFL, right? That, uh, it can be in some places, yeah. But I've still never understood why it's called football because. One person kicks it with their foot. Yeah. That's it. No one else does. The percentage, yeah, the percentage of the game where the ball is kicked. Yeah, yes. There's a stat out there, but it's probably like 0.02%. Right. right. So you can't base the name of your sport on 0.02%. On something that doesn't happen. That's exactly right. You can't. Yes. Okay. Um, one thing that you can't live without. Soccer. <laughs> football, football, football. I just broke my own rule. Football. But I can't, I can't, you can't have the same answer twice, I'm assuming. One thing I can't live without. No, I'll let you uh, have Music, it. music. Okay. I'll let you have it. Music. Got it. Music. Uh, in, in America, what's your favorite season of the year? So you have fall, winter, spring, summer. Well, I'm in San Diego, so it's oh, spring yeah. all year long. Yes. So that's yes. it. That's yeah. But let's say if I wasn't in San Diego, well, in Austin, it's <laughs> in Austin, it was kind of summer and winter. Yes. So again, it's I've not really experienced yeah. the four seasons. But, but if I was in England, or actually, no, if I was in Connecticut, maybe um, summer. I feel like being in San Diego, your answer could be San Diego, and everyone would get it. <laughs> Everyone would get it. Sunny in 75 every day. <laughs> that's exactly right. Fire the weatherman. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. Cool. Um, hey, friends, make sure you go follow uh, David on Twitter. It's uh, David J. Lowe, correct? L-O-W-E. Um, make sure you go check out his book. You can find it on Amazon. Blow it up. And I love that title. Um, I can promise you it, it, it's going to be a great read, So especially if you're an entrepreneur. Um, check out his website, dloplaybook.com. And if you are in need running a business in the medical industry um, or just wanting to find out more about his um, other startup, guardiamedical.com, um, please go check that out as well. And we'll put those in the, in the uh, show notes um, also. So, hey, David, what do you want to leave our guest with? I, I love asking that question of all of my guests. Um, what do you want to leave our listeners with? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, anything you'd like to leave them with? Well, I'd say right now, we're in obviously a very, very challenging uh, time with uh, the coronavirus and everything and yeah. being quarantined and on lockdown and so on. Um, keep, stay positive. Yeah, stay positive. We're going to get through this. Um, I've talked to a lot of people recently. There's a, there's a real air of despair mm -hmm. and that we are just, yeah, it's kind of like, um, let's say people are in a, in a, 
a low, they're resonating in a, a low, or in a low energy state, and kind of for people, it's it's hell in some ways. So, so yeah, just stay positive and talk to people. Get on podcasts. Get on, on Mitch's uh, podcast. Yes, um, yes. This will this will lift you up yeah. um, and inspire you. Uh, but yes, yeah, stay positive. Don't don't watch the news <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> too much. Uh, right. Just yeah, pick and choose the right media outlets and, and don't don't despair about leadership let's say in this country and some of the the uh yeah i won't get into politics we'll but um it but yeah just yeah we'll leave it at that <laughs> but just yeah stay positive have cold showers every morning <laughs> yes <laughs> like me yes. like me and wim hof <laughs> and uh what else i feel like that's not, not yeah. ending it quite in the right way but yeah just just Keep going, keep going. If you're an entrepreneur, whatever you're doing, keep going and we'll get through this together. Yes. I love it, I love it. Uh, that's the message, brothers and sisters. Please stay positive. And I think you know if you've listened to our show for any length of time at all, that is what we are about, shedding love and light into as many lives as we possibly can. So stay safe, uh, friends, stay healthy, take care of your loved ones. And if you need anything, let us know, reach out. If you need some encouragement, um, we are going to do an episode soon on mental health, but if you need something between now and then, please reach out to David or I. We would love to encourage you and to support you any way you can. Make sure you follow us on social media, M Gray Media, that's G-R-A-Y. Make sure you subscribe to the show anywhere you listen to podcasts, The Mitch Gray Show, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, a lot of great information and videos there as well. So, uh, David, stay on the line for a second after we end, and we'll finish up. Brothers and sisters, have a great day, and we will talk to you soon.